Most of you know me as Matt, or just McKenna. However, I've been given a lot of other nicknames in my four years here at the Abbey. Some of you know me as Mac, Mateo, Matik, or the better MM. Unfortunately, I've also been known as McCankles, Banana Man, and Liquid McKenna, and those are just the ones I know about. I'll also say that these days, most of my teachers call me Matthew, because adults always use your full name when they're mad. Despite the incredible embarrassment some of my nicknames have caused me, they all hold an incredible significance in my heart. Nicknames are inherently special because they indicate a special bond between two people. Whenever I hear someone call me by one of my many names, I almost always know who it is, and it almost always brings a smile to my face. I know it may seem silly to focus this talk on something as trivial as a nickname, but in 11 days, all the sixth formers and I will be gone, and all some of you will remember us by is a nickname. This brings me to my main topic, the underappreciated term legacy. You know the cliche speech opener. The Oxford Dictionary defines legacy as, well, I'm going to use it. Sorry, Mrs. Bonin. Because their definition of something left or handed down by a predecessor fails miserably at truly capturing what it means. Legacy means so much more than that, though I'll admit it is difficult to put into words. The best definition of legacy I could come up with is the impact and memories a person, place, or thing leaves behind on another person, place, or thing. I don't think that sentence is even close to being grammatically correct, so instead, I'll tell a story to clarify what I'm trying to get across. I was fortunate to make the varsity football team my fourth form year. I weighed a chubby 180 pounds and had one full season of JV football experience under my belt. I distinctly remember two things about that first season on varsity. First, getting dressed in the bathroom every day with Carl Jackson because there weren't enough lockers. And second, Kevin Ellix. Carl, you can relax. I promise I won't tell everybody about how you didn't wash your football pants all season long. <laughs> now, let me explain about Kevin Ellix. Every day in practice, we would play a game called Thud, which basically involved the offensive starters running plays, full speed, game contact against the second team defense. Every day, I would line up across from Kevin Ellix, and every day without fail, I would end up on my back groaning in pain after he had bulldozed me into the ground. And every single time I got flattened, I'd look up at the sky and question why I decided to play football. But what I remember most is that then I would see Kevin's hand outstretched, waiting to help me up. I wasn't really friends with Kevin, and I haven't talked to him since he graduated. But you could say that the way he helped me up every time had more of an impact on me than all of his blocks combined, which is saying something. His gesture was a legacy, an example that taught me how to be a football player and how to be a captain. Eleven days, and then all that will be left of us sixth formers are stories and legacies like that. They matter more and last longer than the record book stuff. Yes, the football team made it to a bowl game for the first time in eight years. Yes, the baseball team won its first EIL championship. Yes, we are the first graduating class ever to reach 100% participation in donations, even if it's mostly because of our really annoying class agents. <clears throat> Ali Ponte. <laughs> but what we'll remember are the little things, like Kate Hughes's laugh that you can hear across the dining hall and is funny until you've heard it nonstop for half an hour or seeing Arthur Shipman sprinting to class at 8.17 a.m. in pajamas with a toothbrush in his mouth. 
Even the memory of something as small as Lucia Billings' obsessive love for the Patriots will stay with me for the rest of my life. Four years have flown by, and I never thought I'd be addressing the entire school body. Since I have this chance, I want to acknowledge the legacy you've given to me, along with all the embarrassing nicknames. No matter who you are, whether we hang out every day or if we've only spoken a handful of times, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making my Abbey experience truly incredible, one little moment at a time. Those of you who know me well know that I'm actually really soft. And if it wasn't for my shaky legs and clammy palms, I probably have a few tears rolling down my cheeks right now. So before I lose it, I'll end with a quote that I found last night at 11.43 p.m. on Google Images. <laughs> it pretty much captures what I'm trying to say. Moving on is simple. It's what we leave behind that is hard. Thank you.